how to layer screen print with your Cricut. So today I'm gonna to create three different layers. I'm gonna show you guys inside of Cricut Design Space how to create those layers so you can line them up perfectly. And I'm also gonna give you guys some other tips and tricks along the way so you can only do one screen with multiple colors as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off over here on designbundles.net, this is the bundle that we are gonna be using. This is a t-shirt levers bundle. This is perfect for anybody that is getting into to making t-shirts, whether you're selling them, making them for yourself, you name it, you guys are going to love this. This is amazing, it is perfect, it is packed full of all kinds of goodies as you guys can see here. I'm gonna be showing you guys this really cool one here. We have designed one that's gonna go on your sleeve so you can bleach those, you could use paints or whatever to get some really fun effects. So we're gonna use that today. And then we're gonna be using this bundle right here today so I can show you how to layer those so it's perfect just in time for Christmas. But like I said, this is packed full of goodies for only $20 so definitely make sure you guys check it out. These are limited and you do not have to be a plus member to purchase these. Just add them to your cart and simply check out. All right, so let's go ahead and head on over to Cricut Design Space. All right, so jumping right over here to Cricut Design Space, here's the design that I'm gonna be using today as well as this one right here. For this design right here that we're gonna be using for our sleeves, I'm actually going to use cardstock so that way I don't have to waste a stencil. You could use um, a screen print stencil if you want to or you could use something like acetate which is kind of like a plastic. That way you could rinse them and use them over and over again, whether you're using bleach or whether you're using paint. So I do highly recommend that you do something like that. You could even use an old takeout container as well, um, something that you already have cardboard. So today I'm actually gonna use cork stock here. It's just something easy and cheap in the craft room because I don't need to go through using vinyl and all of that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be using card stock for that one. So I'm going to cut this out twice the same way, but I'll reverse one when I cut it out. I don't need to duplicate this twice and have one to the left, one to the right. I just can flip it whenever I get there since we're using a tree. Now, if it was a word, you may wanna go ahead and flip that now because obviously once you flip it, it would be backwards, if that makes sense. So this one here, we're gonna size this one down. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take my t-shirt here and so where I would measure, because that curved part is going to be right here on the t-shirt, I'm gonna measure from here to here, which I got about nine and a half inches. So I'm gonna change this. So depending on the size of your t-shirt, your sleeves are going to be different, whether you're using a youth or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and size this down. So I'm gonna do the height here too. I'm gonna go ahead and do nine. Point, I'm gonna go ahead and do 9.75 to give me a little bit overage. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna do that there and then I'm going to duplicate it like I said. That way I cut it out twice with my cardstock. So that one's ready and out of the way. So what I've already done is for my layer, say for example, this tree comes in three different pieces. So if I wanted to do this, you know, white, green, red, I could do that. But what I went ahead and did was selected those right away and I've welded them and I did the same thing when, with any of these other pieces. So I've made sure those pieces are one. So now what I'm going to do, so we're going to eventually create, so I actually have one, two, three, four different colors here, but I'm gonna do three stencils. So ultimately you could get away with doing one stencil with this design because it does not layer on top of each other. So you could take these foam brushes here and you can actually dab it on in those areas and create one stencil. So what I would actually do at that point is I would select everything and then I would go ahead and hit weld and so this is going to create it into one single design as you can see here it changed it to brown and that's okay so then I would come back and look at the picture to see which pieces would be green and red and I would just use something like this you could also use these little squeegees which come in different sizes I purchased mine on Amazon it even came with one that was like a little stick tons of these super duper cheap so you can individually do those pieces using one stencil but I know a lot of you guys want to see today how can you create multiple and line those up perfectly because for example say that your design did lay on top of each other you would need to separate those pieces correct so here we go so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the undo button 
and we're gonna go ahead and select. So all of my green pieces, so I'm gonna grab this one, hold down the shift, I'm gonna grab my next one and then grab that tree. I'm gonna go ahead and weld all three pieces together because I want those to be one file. I want them to stick together. You can attach it. You don't have to weld. I'm a welder. Anybody else, raise your hand. Let me know in the comments below. Do you weld versus attach? I just automatically weld. Unless it's gonna make a mistake, I just attach. But um, you're gonna attach those essentially so they stay together when you cut out. So that's one file. Then I'm gonna come over here to my red pieces. I'm gonna select both red. I can grab them here or I could do it right there from the design. You can tell which ones because you see that darker gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach. I'll attach them this time. So you can see those are gonna cut together. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to attach the blue and the brown and I'm gonna go ahead and attach those. So it's gonna turn them both brown, but I know that in the is gonna be blue for me. So that way I can stencil a piece of that with the blue and then I'll go down to the bottom. They're totally separate so I can do that and that eliminates another one. But if you wanted to, you could create that extra. So here we go. So now let's go ahead and figure out the size. I'm gonna select everything and we're gonna figure out how big we want this to be on our t-shirt. So let's go ahead and get ready to measure it. All right, so I'm doing a t-shirt here. This one right here is a small. And let me tell you guys, everybody's Dollar Tree is different, but I found these. These are the Gildan Soft Style. They had all sorts of different brands, short sleeves, long sleeves, adults, kids, at our Dollar Tree for a dollar. And if you guys follow us over on Instagram, you would see that I posted that on our stories as well as our Facebook stories. Um, so make sure you guys follow us there for all of those tips. But they had buckets, like bins of these for a buck. So definitely make sure you guys check out your Dollar Tree as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is take our measuring tape and I'm gonna measure to see about how big I want this design to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and do something about 10 inches because you see over here, I've got part of the tree way over here. I've got these pieces. So if I shrink that down, it's just gonna make that design so much smaller. So we're gonna go with 10 inches. So I'm gonna go with my width here with everything selected. We're gonna hit 10 inches. So now we are ready to go. So this is how we're gonna line these pieces up. We're gonna come over here to shapes. We're gonna go over here to a star. You could do a star, you could do a circle, you could do whatever you want to. I do like the star because I can visually see those points line up there. And we wanna make these nice and small. So maybe about, you know, a half an inch or so. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I can always come up here so I can quickly do that and get my height to 0.5, enter. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that back. We're gonna grab it here and then we're gonna drag it over. I wanna make sure that it's nowhere near these green pieces, but it's definitely gonna be in enough. So I'll actually maybe start down here. Make sure it's gonna be in enough to where it's not gonna get in, in the way of my design. But since I'm doing 10 inches, you know, where I'm cutting a 12 by 12, I wanna make sure it's still gonna be able to cut together, right? So I'm gonna get this one here and now we're going to duplicate it. Since I have three layers, we're gonna duplicate it two more times. That way there is a total of three stars. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab all three of my stars. I can move them back in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab, we can do that over here. So hit shift, grab all three stars. We're gonna come up here to a line and we're gonna go to center. So it looks like there's one star, but there is three stars. And then at this point, we can go ahead and move these into position. So say we've got one here. We're going to duplicate it at this point. While I have it selected, it's got all three stars again. I'm gonna go ahead and line this one maybe right about here. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Now I could go ahead and hold this down grab that next one, make sure all of my stars are selected. We're gonna duplicate it because it's just gonna make it easier for me. And that way I can come on this side and line this up. Now they don't have to be absolutely perfect because when we go to lay it on the thing, I'm gonna be able to line them up no matter what. So, but if you're a perfectionist and you want to go ahead and make sure those are 100% straight, you could definitely do that. So say we're happy with this, looks great to me. We're gonna go ahead and attach those stars into layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab one of the top. I'll move down, grab one of, holding down my shift. I'm gonna grab one from the top. I'm gonna come down here. See, I can come down three stars. We're gonna go grab another one. It's gonna grab the one from the bottom. We're gonna count one, two, three, grab one. 
which is gonna go on the other side. We can't tell where it's at. We're gonna go one, two, three. We're gonna go to the next one. So what I'm gonna do here is if it's got the four stars, I'm gonna go ahead and do attach. All right, so I'm actually gonna show you guys a much easier way. So you definitely could have three, 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 and then go back and select those. But just to make it even easier, put one star on all four points and then duplicate those. So that's what we did. So say, let's pretend, let's go backwards here. Let's pretend that we did all four stars at the point. Now what we're gonna do is duplicate that, right? And so I'll, I can move these back into place. We'll grab the next one and the next one. We're gonna do that exact same thing, align center, and they're all attached there. And then we're gonna go ahead and line these up. So I went ahead and I actually welded instead of attaching, that way it created one file. And now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And then I'm going to select all three of these. We're gonna come up here to align, we're going to center, and we're gonna go ahead and line these up one last time. Just something about like this looks good to me. And then we're gonna put a star system with each layer. So we're gonna grab a set of stars here. I will go to my first layer, which is in the, with that, um, that little brown piece there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit attach. And that way those stick together. I could weld it so it's all one system if I want to. So once again, just hitting weld and now it's all together in one. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab another star system and I'm gonna grab that red set there. Once again, I'm just gonna weld it to make it super duper easy. And then grab our last star system. And then we're gonna grab that green layer hit weld. And so weld or attach, whichever way is going to work for you. So that gives me three layers. And so we are good to go. So we've got our, we've got our two sleeve pieces. So let's go ahead and hit make it. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose on the mat. So that's gonna separate these. It's totally fine that they're showing black. I'm just using a couple pieces of scrap cardstock. They're not scrap, they're new, but you get what I'm saying. And then I've got in the here, we've got our green layer, and then we have the Believe in Magic. Believe Magic, <laughs> you get the point. So when it comes to this, we need to mirror these. Normally with adhesive vinyl, you don't mirror, but because we are placing on, on the back side of our stencil, we do want to mirror these layers. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so whenever we go to place these onto our design, we are going to place them down, but whenever we come over, it's going to be correct. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. We're gonna go ahead and find our machine here and then choose. So we're gonna go ahead and cut out the cardstock first. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. So we're gonna go to browse all materials. We're just gonna choose card. And for this one, I'm just going to pick medium cardstock. If you are struggling at all with your um, cardstock doing any sort of tears, cut it out with intricate cut settings. It always works like a dream. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose cardstock medium, which is right here. We're gonna hit done. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit remember so it doesn't ask me again for the next one. So let's go ahead and cut it out. All right, so let's take that first piece of cardstock. Doesn't matter what color it is. We're gonna go ahead and load that on here, and then we're going to load it into our machine, just like that. All right, so we've got our flashing. We're gonna go ahead and hit go. So we're gonna go ahead and let this one cut out. I'll cut out the second one. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. I'll cut out the second one, and we'll come back when it gets time to load our um, adhesive vinyl. All right, so now we are ready for our adhesive vinyl layer. Now, something I totally forgot to mention to you guys is we're gonna go back into edit, which is nice that we're able to go back over here in case you forget. But one thing that you wanna do when you're creating a stencil is you want a little bit of a border all the way around. So I can still go back in before before I cut it out and I'm just leaving, I'm just centering this up, leaving myself just enough to where that paint can't go on the outside. Now I will be adding some painter's tape as well, but that just gives me that little bit of an edge. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do the same thing to these ones as well. All right, so we are ready for our very first one. What I've got here is three colors that I had multiple of. Um, it could definitely be colors that you don't like, that you're never gonna use, you bought too much of, or you got in a mystery box. If you're like me and you love to purchase those mystery boxes, but sometimes you get colors that you're just never gonna use, it doesn't go with your projects, or you just have a ton of it, you need to get rid of some old, definitely use those colors. It doesn't matter. It does not need to be the same color. Now something for another trick that I thought of after the fact, and I thought, you know, that would have been nice. So there 
there's actually clear adhesive vinyl. So there's actually like a sparkly one and stuff too that you can put on top of other um, adhesive vinyl. You could use that so you could physically see through that when you go to line them up and that would help and you wouldn't need your stars. Um, you could definitely take some transfer tape if you have a thick enough one and do that as well and use that as your stencil. So that's just some tips as well. So here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and go, it doesn't matter which color because like I said, it's just doing its perfect purpose as a stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and line up our first one here, getting it on there, and then we're going to go ahead and load it. All right, so before I hit go, I definitely want to come up here and change my settings to premium vinyl glossy. This is matte, but I always choose that setting. I don't know why it is, but that's just what I do. I'm sure it would cut fine on the matte, but it's just me. So we're going to go ahead and hit go. While these cut out, since I have three layers, I'm going to kind of speed through this, clip all this out so we don't waste a ton of time. But I know that I don't do a lot of videos to where I take you into Cricut Design Space, walk you all the way through that and cut it out. So I really wanted to slow this down because because you guys can rewatch this over and over again. Another thing that I want to tell you guys, sometimes I get that I talk way too fast and I do. So what you can actually do, there is a gear. So down here on YouTube, if you click at this gear right here, it can, it'll actually give you the option to either speed my video up. I'm a fan of watching stuff in 2.5 or two, uh, two times the speed, which sounds crazy, but it allows me to watch it quickly, especially when I'm in a hurry. You can do that on all sorts of videos. So not just mine, but just a helpful tip as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load that next color load it in the machine and cut it out. Now, while that's cutting out, I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy lined up and ready to cut. So if you're wanting a super straight line, I highly recommend using your paper trimmer or you can flip it over and follow the guide here. So I'm gonna figure out about where I need to be. So it's about somewhere right here. So I'm just folding it over, getting a crease, I'm gonna hit go there. So now I know that I wanna find follow this line on the guide. So that's another little tip for me. So now, like I said, while that's getting out, we're gonna go ahead and start weeding. So when it comes to creating stencils, you wanna remove the pieces you normally would keep. So we're just gonna go through here. I'm gonna start with all of my stars so I can find those. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. I always kinda tilt my head to the side a little bit. It helps that light just kinda hit perfectly and then I just start weeding. We'll go ahead and unload this one and load the next. So doing that same thing, I'm gonna figure out that crease and just kind of fold that. Now, knowing my design and how much I cut off that one, it should be the exact same because obviously the stars are the same. So on these, we should be cutting two inches off every single one. And that's of course, as long as your material is all 12 inches. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weave these pieces up. All right, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Now you guys let me know, what is your weeding tips? Do you use a bright pad or some sort of light? Do you tilt your head, maybe add another little lamp or something? Let me know what your weeding tips are. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unload the last one here. And then we're gonna get ready to put our vinyl on our stencils. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move our Cricut out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and bring up our Cricut to easy press because when we do these layers, we need to apply the heat, especially to lock it in at the very end. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this stuff out really quick and get ready to go. All right, so taking our very first screen, I'm gonna go ahead and take my biggest design and get it on here. I wanted to go ahead and show you some stuff today. So I've used these screens in the past. I've used them all in the past. If you don't wash them fast enough, you will get, I'm hoping you guys can see that, you guys will get um, your ink. It will lock into those tiny silk screens. Um, as you can see, this one right here, I had, I wanted to show you guys this today just because I want to show you guys how to clean them. So for this one right here, I used the Sublimation Paints by Artist Free and they did stain. But I have found whenever I was doing the hack with the, um, the Toilet Bowl Bleach Cleaner, I used that same stencil for that and it cleaned them. So bleach does clean these. Now I think you wanna be careful with that silk screen. And the one that I used was the toilet bowl cleaner. So um, I'm, today I'm gonna to try that foaming um, bleach spray and kind of set that on there and see if it cleans. Now there is cleaner specifically for these screens here, but hey, if we have a hack with something we already own in our home, let's do it. All right, so with these, once again, we need to flip them over. We're gonna work from this side. I'm gonna see if there is enough room 
to place it like this and there's not. So I'm gonna work with these in this direction. You really do wanna try to have your design small enough to work on your screen this way. But I have done them this way and that's just what we're gonna do. So what I'm trying to do is pay attention to where my screen's blocked because it will block some of that ink. So I'm trying to be mindful. So this mistake is here. So that tree's gonna come over here and do its thing. So that's the way I'm going to work. So, unless you have a whole bunch of intricate pieces, you don't even need transfer tape. So you can see mine are nice and big and bold. I do have in here a few pieces, so I will get a transfer tape for that one. This one, I literally have two pieces. So I'm gonna move them over with my weeding tool, which I'm gonna show y'all, and that's just gonna help save some time and some money. So, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make sure my Cricut Easy Press is ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and get this first one down. Placement, just trying to be nice and straight here and we'll be good to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel a corner. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna peel over a corner like this or a piece or a side, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna try to get this guy nice and straight on here. Somewhere right about there, kind of line that up. And then I'm slowly going to work my way all the way down, just smoothing it out. And just like that, you guys seen, I did not have to use transfer tape, we're good to go. But like I said, only do that if you have big pieces like this. Now, if my stars were way further away, I really would wanna come in here and add some painter's tape, and you may wanna do that. Depending on how you're flooding yours and how much ink you're adding, you may wanna go in here and add some painter's tape all the way around. Now, because of the techniques I'm doing, I think I'm gonna be good to go. So I'm not gonna worry about it today, which I may need to do it on the other ones, so we'll see. So once I get it down on this side here, I flip it over, I take a squeegee, and then I'm gonna rub it in, so that way, there's gonna be no gaps in between that adhesive vinyl and our screen. Screen number one is good to go, so let's go ahead and get the rest. Now for this one, since I'm using transfer, I don't need transfer for the whole thing. I've got these stars, but I don't need that. I just need a piece that's gonna cover this area right here. So anywhere there's some pieces, say for example, there was only pieces here, I would just need it here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut down a small piece. And I may do that honestly for the next one, just to be safe. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take that transfer tape, drop it down just right there, take our squeegee so we can pick up those pieces. For this one, I'm trying to stay down on the same side as that one, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna peel a corner. I could peel the whole thing off, but I wanna be safe and really make sure I'm lining it up nicely, so I'm just gonna peel a corner and do the exact same thing. Now I had some major bubbles that was gonna happen and kind of squish it up a little bit. And I don't want that because I need to make sure my stars are gonna line up. Because if this buckles down here, you think, eh, we're not inking there, it's fine. You need them to be nice and straight because I, I wanna make sure that our stars line up perfectly. All right, so there we have it. So we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna rub from the side while the transfer tape is there. That way we can pick up all of our pieces. All right, and then we're gonna do just like we did before it and rub everything down. Flip it over and we're gonna remove that transfer. All right, so I'll be able to use the same piece in just a second. You wanna make sure whenever you're working with little pieces like that, flip it back over one last time and really rub those pieces in one more time. All right, and we are done with screen number two. Let's move on to screen number three. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down that transfer. I wanna go ahead and cut it down. I don't need all of this excess. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and rub in all those little bitty pieces. And then we're gonna go ahead and get this guy trying to stay on the exact same side of the screen. So like I said, I'm trying to block all of this area here. All right, we're gonna take the same one. We're gonna line it up. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted anything that needed to be adjusted, flip it over again, and then rub just as usual. Flip it over and peel one last time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save one of the backings here from our adhesive vinyl because I'm going to be using it as a paint palette. So I'm definitely gonna be using that. All right, so let's go ahead and line up our t-shirt. So what you're gonna need for the t-shirt is get a piece of cardboard, something that you can put in the inside because you do not want um, that ink to go through because it will go through to the other side. What I prefer to use is my old mats. You can still use your mats if you want to because you can wash them, your new ones if you want. But I like to save the old ones. So instead of 
tossing the ones out. You know the ones that are just on their last leg. You can't do nothing else with them, but they have, they feel like they have tag, but nothing sticks to them. Save them for your screen printing t-shirts. So I like to put this in the inside. It just helps keep everything nice and straight um, during the process. So let's go ahead and take our t-shirt and get it inside. All right, so I'm just going right on top, just like this. Getting my sides up here. And just trying to get that tag right there in the middle, just so I can keep this guy nice and straight. And I may need to, keep, to move it down just a little bit because of my design. So now that I've got it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth everything out without pulling. Don't pull or distress your shirt because wherever it sticks, that's where that ink's gonna go. So once I have everything nice and straight, I can then smooth everything out so you guys can see that there. All right, there we have it. So that is going to be our surface and it's going to prevent, it's got a nice flat smooth surface and it's help our t-shirt stay straight as well as protect the back side of that shirt. So let's go ahead and get ready for the first layer. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with that most outside area, the one that's gonna be our main outline, which is gonna be the tree and those little, you know, wow signs. <laughs> I call them the little fireworks. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up. So I don't wanna go all the way over here. I'm gonna line the center of my design. I know the center of my design because of my two stars here. So I just wanna figure out my center. I could always come here with a pen, measure it, and really see that. But I'm just gonna take that, and I'm gonna go nice and high here because we know that this is around three inches or so. So I can go all the way up to the top of my tag there. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm centering that. So we are going to Roll with something about like this. It looks good to me. I almost forgot our most important step. How do we line up the stars? You wanna take some tape here. So I've just got some purple tape and I need four pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get four pieces. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to very carefully figure out where those need to go. So I know that one is here. One should be right about there. I'm just gonna make sure we see purple and we do. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Lift it up, get another one there. And there, just make sure those tapes do not block your design and they don't, so it looks good to me. So, and then also think about any other future pieces, is it gonna block anything else? It shouldn't because this is our most outside design. For our inks here, I am using the Speedball paint, so you wanna make sure that you have a screen print paint of some sort. Um, you can definitely do this with, there's lots of different paints out there. There's puff paints, there is tons of paints that you guys can find. There's even some sprays, I believe. Uh, lots and lots of different stuff. There is even sublimation paints that you guys can use as well. You just wanna make sure you do that on a polyester t-shirt or a blended t-shirt. So a few things that I need to do is I don't have a green, so but I do have yellow and I do have blue. So I'm gonna mix those two together to make a green. And then when it comes to my brown, this is what I'm gonna try today. I'm gonna use the white and I'm gonna mix in just a little tiny bit of the brown acrylic paint just just to get that brown color and we're gonna see how that holds up in the wash. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this and I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up but I'm gonna mix a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue to get up with that perfect green. All right, so I've got that perfect green. Now, depending on how dark you want that green to be, how light you want that green to be, you're just gonna keep adding more. And if you need to lighten it back up, you could always add some white to do that. So just refer to a color chart just to figure out, you know, how to make those colors. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this squeegee here. I was trying to double check that everything seems pretty good and mixed up. I had a few chunks in mine. Mine's a little bit older. So if yours is fresh, you definitely shouldn't be having to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some on here. This is not a traditional screen print, so I'm gonna stick within those areas. So holding this down, I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece. So you can see I've got some of that blue. I didn't have it absolutely perfect. So we'll see how that kind of turns out there. And you just wanna stay in the exact same direction. So I've got that there. We can wipe off some of that excess. Go ahead and come down here. And then don't forget, we definitely wanna get those stars. Now, I've done this before and then my stars didn't come through. If they don't, then you're kinda of going in blind. But that's where I said using something like transfer tape, cause you've seen majority of this, I didn't even need transfer tape to pick it up. You could use transfer tape so you can see through for your layers. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one. This one, and like I said, it's gonna be interesting with that blue. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and get our stars here very carefully. Wipe off some of that excess. 
trying to go over it a few times. Because our stars are um, not fabric, so it's, it's kind of a little bit tricky to stick to it. So if you could think of something a little bit better, maybe a washi tape would work better. Um, definitely feel free to use whatever you think would work a little bit better. So now I'm just gonna go through here and clean off any excess ink. All right, so here we go. We wanna go ahead and peel this up. We're gonna go in one swoop motion. You don't wanna really go like this. You wanna grab it from one side. I'm holding down the base and do a one swoop. And there you go. Look at how cool that looks. The stars came out perfect. So we don't have to stress and worry about that. So what we're gonna do is set this one out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is because I don't wanna remove this piece right here, I'm going to hover my Cricut Easy Press. You could hover your heat press, just set this in there and hover it, don't let it touch the inks. And we're just going to let this dry for a little bit before we move on to the next. Now, another way to speed this up, because especially if you have the Cricut Easy Press, that's gonna get heavy real fast. Use a heat gun, but definitely make sure you keep your distance because you do not wanna burn your t-shirt and you can do that fast. Ask me how I know. A safer way to do this would be using a hair dryer because it doesn't get hot enough and it would be absolutely perfect. Perfect. So you could definitely do that. You could have, there is those ones for the craft room, but just take the one that you have from your normal stuff, everyday life and use that to dry it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so that looks good to me. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, I totally forgot to talk about the blue. It looks good. It actually made it a little bit darker green in some areas and I'm, I'm not hating it. What took the longest to dry down is these um, stars on the tape. So because it's not on the t-shirt, so those may take a little bit longer. So you just wanna be careful because if you have to do any shifting around, you don't want that ink to accidentally smudge on the t-shirt. So we are gonna go ahead and try to line up the next one, which is going to be the red layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these on top of the other stars. Okay, so you guys may not be able to see through here, but these are lined up pretty good. I may be off a tiny bit. We're gonna roll with it. So we've got the blue piece and that brown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of that white to create that brown. And I've already wiped off this sponge. I really love these squeegees. They're amazing. Like I said, there's different sizes. Amazon, I have a link below for you. But another thing you can do is use a sponge like this. And I may even do that just to kind of help you guys visually see, but you can use your squeegees like this as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of white and mix it with that brown acrylic. You could use, um, say a dye, for example, if you have some of those alcohol inks or something like that, just enough to, um, to make this brown. And I'm just taking a little bit I'm not gonna need a whole lot. All right, looks good to me. So I'm gonna carefully hold this in place and then just kind of pounce that down. All right, so we've got our brown. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on that blue. For the blue, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my squeegee because just to show you how easy it is, I can go right into the container here, just get a little bit like so, and then we're just going to squeegee down. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over that a few more times, just really pushing it into the t-shirt. And I'm gonna come back for my stars. And honestly, I don't know what I was thinking, but you don't have to do the stars again because we already have the first, you only need to do the stars once, but we're already here, so we're gonna keep going. All right, so we're gonna lift it because then with those stars too, you don't have to worry about trying to dry them down again. And you can actually see with my stars how much I got off a little bit, but I think everything's gonna still line up okay. So now let's go ahead and dry down the blue. And I would highly recommend that you really do not do the stars for the second time or third time because it is gonna mess you up with lining because now my stars are a little messed up, but I'm gonna try to do my best, so here we go. So we're going to get our last layer, which is going to be that red one. So we are gonna go ahead and go right on top. Looks good. Now I can also see through this and I can see that I'm not gonna get on that blue or my green piece or anything, so we are good. So this one's red, same thing. I'm gonna be able to just dip right inside of the container. But for this one to show you guys, we're gonna go ahead and use our squeeze. So you can go ahead and take your squeegee here, get a little bit out here. And so using another squeegee, just to show you guys, we're just gonna go ahead and get all the way across. So you don't have to, when you're doing it like this with your Cricut, you don't have to do the standard of getting it all the way at the top, taking a whole bunch of ink. Just take what you need and get what you've, you know, color in what you got. One of the biggest tips is staying in that same direction and then just going over it, pushing it down into the t-shirt a few times. If I go in another direction, I wanna go in that exact same direction like this. 
taking off that excess. When I do it like this, I can actually get it right back inside of the container so I have less waste as well. All right, so we are going to peel up our last color just like that. It came out amazing. So now what we can do is remove our tape and dry it down one last time before we press. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and peel that um, tape like I said. When it comes to your last layer, you could actually just let it air dry if you want to. I just like to dry it down before I apply the press. All right, so we're gonna dry it one last time. All right, so for our final press here, what we're gonna do is we are going to remove, you don't wanna press this with your um, sticky adhesive because it's, it can make a mess. It's just gonna kind of melt that adhesive and all that. So carefully, you can see, make sure this is completely dry or you can move the inks around. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this out. And you guys can see where the paint got on there. You can wash that off in the sink, baby wipe. Um, you can definitely clean that up. Very carefully, I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of parchment paper in between. You could take copy paper, whatever. This is just going to protect the back side of your t-shirt from getting any of that ink when you go to press. I'm gonna go ahead and get my pad underneath here. Go ahead and double check and make sure that your parchment is perfectly in between. We're gonna cover it with one more piece of parchment. I've got it at 320 for 30 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and get this on here and we're gonna hit go. So this is gonna go ahead and lock in those colors to last wash after wash. So do not skip that step of using your heat press. All right, there we have it. We're gonna go ahead and peel off that Teflon and our inks are cured, good to go. This shirt is ready to be washed. I would wait around 48 to 72 hours before I do that very first wash. So there you guys have it. It came out so stinking cute. And this is using the screen print inks. Now there is an additive that you can actually add in these inks and it will make it puff up whenever you go to apply that heat. So that's really cool in itself. So let me go ahead and show you if you decide to use the sleeve stencils, how you would do that. Now, before I get started, I want to make sure that my arms are nice and straight and smooth. Doesn't have any major wrinkles in it or anything like that. Because once you pull that wrinkle after the fact, it's gonna move that ink. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. So that looks good to me. So now we're ready to take our stencil. Now the way that these stencils work is this round piece is gonna go right about here. So it looks good, see how that's gonna line up there. And then we can go ahead and add a few pieces of tape to help hold that in place. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take that tape here. All right, so once again, we've got our yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and come back in with some of that blue. All right, for this one here, we're gonna be doing the yellow stars and the green trees. I've got my green made up, got my stencil here. You wanna be careful because there's not a whole lot holding that into place. I may even get a couple more pieces of tape just to kind of help with that shifting. Um, once again, if you do use like an acetate or something, that is gonna allow you to reuse these stencils over and over again. So we're gonna go ahead and go in here. I'm gonna go in with my green first and then I'll come back with the yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our green that we made here. And I like to kind of dab a little bit off so it's nothing crazy. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stencil these in. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of holding down the area since I'm working with cardstock. And I'm doing a dabbing motion. I don't wanna do a swooping motion or like use my squeegees because it can get underneath. We don't have that adhesive vinyl to help hold it down. All right, so we're gonna go back in with that yellow, just dipping right inside of there. And we're gonna get our stars. All right, so we've got it, it is good to go. We're gonna carefully lift away our stencil here. And then we're gonna dry it down just like we did before. Now you guys pause this video in the comments below. Let me know where I've already made my mistake. I just realized I've made a big one and you guys stop, pause, let me know in the comments below, take a guess what I have already done wrong. All right, so now that you guys are back, let's go. So I think I'm going to do, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do both sleeves. I think I'm gonna do just one, but one thing that you would want to do because of my mistake, you guys can see I forgot to put, this is why it's important to put that uh, Teflon sheet in between. So you can see where those inks started to come through that fabric. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press it like this and then kind of peel. So it'll give a little bit of that color through there. Um, so it'll have its own look going on. But if I didn't do that, I could still flip this over once I press that and I could do the other side. So I had a completely wrapped sleeve. Obviously I can't do that today because I already messed up, but I think it would be cuter with one. I don't wanna overkill it with that but I am gonna show you guys one last trick that you guys can do with screen print, which is screen print confetti. So let me go ahead and press this guy. Now, since I made a mistake, I wanna make sure that I protect my pad. So we're gonna get one down and then we're gonna get one on top and then we're gonna go ahead and press, same thing. 320, I'm trying to avoid that seam, so I'm just doing this side here for 30 seconds. 
All right, get that out of our way and peel. Let's see how that looked on the back. So I didn't get a whole lot. Let's go ahead and peel those apart. All right, so I didn't get a whole lot through. You guys can see the inside of that there. I didn't get a whole ton of that through there. Let's try to flip it over and press one more time from the back side. You see how I moved it over? I'm using fresh parchment because we don't want that to get on our press. Same thing, I'm gonna press 320 for 30 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna lift that. I'm just gonna see if it helped push anything through. I think we're pretty much where we're at. So I would definitely be careful with that. So once you were done and you pressed everything, you would have your your parchment paper in between the entire time, we would flip it over and we would do the same thing to this side. And that way you would have a full wrapped sleeve. And there you guys have it. How stinking cute did that come out? So that was screen print with your um, silk screens. And then also screen printing using cardstock. Honestly, you can do that all the way through. So if I wanted to do cardstock for these pieces here, I could definitely do that as well. So I wanna show you guys one last final trick here. So we are gonna actually use screen print cam Confetti. If you guys haven't seen our other videos on this, it is amazing. You could get mixed colors, you can mix them on your own, do some singles. I've got some silver here and blue, and I'm gonna kind of have some of that kind of come in here. It is so cool. It's almost gonna give you the effect of like that bleach spray. It's so cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get a Teflon under here for our pad, and then we'll have one on top when we get ready. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth out that arm one more time and i'm only going to stick on the arm like i said so that way we have both arms but they're going to be two different looks there we go and now we're going to go in so this is screen print confetti and what it is it's it is screen print ink and what it's, it's been flooded on a certain type of paper and then scraped off to make these tiny little pieces and then you can sprinkle them on to get little pieces or peel it off which i have better luck at this one they're too big and then we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle it on. I'm gonna go ahead and add in just a tiny bit of that silver just so we can kind of see what that would look like, breaking it up a little. And this is like um, a metallic silver is what this is. All right, looks good to me. You really would wanna stick with a color that kind of matched, so maybe a darker blue for this. And so now I'm gonna cover it up and we're gonna press. I'm gonna leave it at that 320 for 30 seconds. Now, when it comes to this, you really wanna to try to give a little bit of pressure. You can see I'm kind of pushing down here. Um, it really does help press it in with a bigger heat press, but you guys see that I do it all the time with a quick easy press. All right, looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and lift that. And then we're gonna go ahead and peel that parchment. There you go. How cool is that? Now, if there's anything, I kind of just take my fingers here and kind of press down anything else that may be popping up. There may be a few pieces that fall out and that's completely normal. So I'll bring this back up so you guys can see here. So that gives you guys two different looks. So you could totally do something like this or even just this if you don't think the combo. I definitely think it'd be cuter if I had the same color blue, but there you guys have it. Now you guys could put that all over, but there you have it. I have screen printed using the Cricut. I hope you guys are going to do this. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have learned anything new. Let me know if you guys are gonna be recreating this. If you guys are, make sure you guys join our Facebook community group so you can share your projects over there so we can give you guys all of the love and support and let you know how fabulous it is. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.